Hey there, this is the story of how I got my certified contractor's license. This has been an amazing journey so far and I'm excited to tell you the story. So you can either click away now or sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. Way back when I was 15 years old, I built a doghouse. And then they just came in and gave me my license and it really wasn't that hard. Kidding, of course, kidding. Okay, so I was interested in building things from a young age. Not super young, but kind of like right there in the middle between super young and slightly older. Anyway, so I started helping friends build boat docks, uh, barns, I helped remodel homes, church buildings that we were working on. I loved it. I really enjoyed working with my hands, climbing roofs and getting dirty. I also had a small little business where I crafted custom walking canes and walking sticks. I loved wood. This is how Jesse looks when he's spraying his canes. These are crook neck twisted canes. Oak, walnut, what are these, Jess? Oak. They're oak and he's staining them different colors, minwax, and then he sprays them two coats of lacquer that I'm staining smelling and I'm gonna leave. All the different saws in here and mortise machines, band saw, chop saw. Sorry, Dad, the lacquer did really smell bad. Maybe that's why I'm a little bit loopy. So all of that was when I was in Texas. From about 15 to about 19 years old is when all that was happening. From there, I actually moved to Council Bluffs, Iowa, kind of spread my wings a little bit. Went to live with my uncle Steve, which is my mom's brother. It wasn't the best time of my life, but even there I worked for a tile guy, um, a, a construction guy also, and I, and I just, I learned more. I learned how to do more things. So I lived in Iowa for about nine months and then I moved to Jacksonville, Florida. I was probably about 20 years old here and I started working for a local builder. And I also delivered bounce houses on the side. So I was about 20 years old at this time and I still had a lot to learn. And not just about construction, but about leadership and business. So I went through phases of doing construction and some other types of jobs. For a bunch of months there, I actually even worked at Chick-fil-A. My name is Jesse, I work at Chick-fil-A. I'm a, it's a pretty cool job, but um, that's my buddy Mark. <laughs> oh, I held that for so long. I'm gonna use my hands to make this more interesting. I started working for a wonderful man named Sean Reyes. I met Sean at the local Jacksonville House of Prayer, and he was a huge player in my life. He was awesome. Every day with Sean was a learning experience, and we just had a blast on the job site. <laughs> We'll get you a stunt double. These beams were fun because he had to cut like a 22 and a half degree, multiple angles and everything. And I love this piece of work. Can you see that? Look how much bigger it looks in here. <laughs> Look how big it is. Welcome to this show. We're about to take this and flush cut it. You see how it's not a flush cut? So we're gonna go ahead and make it a flush cut. So this is how you do it. A good whistle after you're done cutting is always a good idea. So after about a year of working for him, he encouraged me to open up my own small business or get my own LLC, limited liability company. I had no idea what I was doing, but I found myself talking to a business banker and getting everything just started kind of happening. I just found myself doing it, figuring it out and doing it. And I kind of branched off into my own little thing. I used different small websites like Thumbtack and just friends from church called me, hey, we need a doorway put in here. We need stairs built here. We need our wood flooring repaired. You know, I need a deck built, stuff like that. So I was making a little bit more than I was at Chick-fil-A at this time. Business was good. I got a little logo made by Ryan Schneller, imagemediaresource.com. Check him out, he's awesome. This logo, I'm wearing my shirt, just kind of got back home from work. So around that time, I actually started dating someone whose parents started thinking about our potential future or the lack thereof and me being a, a carpenter and you only make like 20 or 30 grand a year if you look it up online. So there was a concern. So there was kind of like a motivation to, hey, you need to kind of better yourself a little bit here. Also, one of my best friend's dad actually wanted to do kind of a business deal, like kind of flipping homes kind of thing. He actually fronted a portion of the money that I needed to actually get the books, schedule the test, take the class. So those things were all just pushing me towards the next step. It's either that or get a job at the post office. And I was not about to do that. So I registered for the class. I spent about six to seven months studying. There was literally like four feet of books that I needed to know inside and out. The funny thing about the contractor test is it's actually an open book test. You're thinking, dude, well, I mean, an open book, just go find the answer. Exactly, go find the answer in four feet of books. So you need to know where like the littlest bit of information is 
in that whole stack of books. So the trick is knowing where the information is, right? So it's all about tabbing, these little tabs on your book. Here, let me show you. Whoa. This is actually the Florida Contractors Manual. I can flip to any table, any chart within a matter of seconds, every chapter, on every page. And this was one of the like 20 books or at least or something like that. You could do curls with this thing. I think the passing rate of this test is under 20%. So there's that. Every class I went to, my brain got bigger. The first two classes I went to, my brain got smaller because I was like, everything is just going way over my head. This is really intense. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Dude's name was Rob. And I started kind of grabbing every other thing he was saying. And then all of a sudden I was, you know, just, it was coming in. I was like, my brain is expanding. This is crazy. After three or four months in, I can do these formulas. My fingers are walking on the calculator. I didn't want to stop going to the classes. I was like, I'm going to pass this test and keep coming. This is awesome. This guy's a walking encyclopedia. I found a friend named Heath. We still talk today about business, but we studied at Panera like every single day for like three or four months and it was, it was great. So the day was finally here. I drove to Tallahassee, got to my hotel room, and I literally laid in bed until 6.30 a.m. watching the clock the whole time. Got up, was there by seven, pencil in my hand, books by my side open the test. As soon as I opened that test, I didn't recognize one thing. Nothing I had studied was on the test. Not more than five tabs I had tabbed were actually questions on the test. I freaked out in my head. I had to stop for a second, close my eyes. I just was like, Lord, if you want me to take this test, God, this is gonna have to be a total miracle. So I picked up the test. I literally found the answers in the untabbed, unhighlighted portions of the books. This, this, that is a miracle. I mean, I studied hard, I put in the effort, but this was God. <laughs> it's a big book. Near the end, there was just one question that I, I had, I had no idea what it even was. I was flying through pages, boom, and I just found the chart, like it popped out at me. I found the information on the chart, did the math, and I got the answer. Anyway, I think I wound up getting like 82 or 84 or something on the test. I literally walked out of that building went to my truck and burst into tears. <laughs> There's always more to every story, but that's the gist of how I got my actual contractor's license. I'm still learning a great deal every single day. Last year, I hired probably 20 or 30 employees, and that was a mistake. Employees are expensive. They're probably the biggest cost to a company. You gotta pay their workers' comp, you gotta pay their taxes and their withholdings, and you gotta do all this stuff. And it was crazy being like 23 years old and supporting all these people's families. As of today, I've whittled down to just a few employees and we manage our crews of trustworthy subcontractors. I spend most of my time estimating those jobs, project managing those jobs, meeting new people, talking to my tax people, making sure everything's good. I run all my own books and I talk to my accountant that helps me do the taxes aspect. There's a lot that goes into running a business. It's not for the faint of heart. I've chosen to do this and I absolutely love it. And I'm not saying that this business couldn't just totally fail. That's that could happen. What's my backup plan? I've, I have absolutely no idea. I could still work at the post office. I could do that. The Lord always has a plan for all of us. And I don't think that, you know, if we just fail at one thing, it doesn't mean we can't start another thing. So anyway, um, this is a long video. If you're even at this point of the video, you're like super awesome. I want to encourage you. If you're thinking about starting your own business, do that, but know that it's, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of you doing a lot of it yourself for a long time until you can really afford to have the employees to do it for you. I've tried that. I've even recently had to lay off like my own cousin because I just, the business, the numbers didn't make sense. Anyway, not to get uh, too personal with my business. I've actually written all my notes on here. I hope this story encouraged you with your journey. Love God, love people. And by the way, thanks for 100 subscribers. That's the end of my video. I'm just gonna end it. See you next time.